lifting thereof are the ways of death. Second Peter chapter 2 and beginning at verse number 12 indicates unto us why it is the way of death. Because he said, but these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of things they don't understand. They utterly perish in their own corruption. But shall receive the reward of unrighteousness. They commit as they counted flesh to riot in the daytime. Spots they are and blemishes, sporting themselves their own deceit while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery and cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls and hard they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way and have gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. Even Peter indicates here, these individuals were following the wrong way yeah. rather than the right way. The reason why he called them cursed children. Because he said that they had forsaken the right way. Yes, which indicates that they had come in contact with the right way. Uh -huh. And had chosen to follow another way. Yes, sir. That's the danger of these cunningly devised faith. Yes, sir. That's the danger of following men religiously. Mm -hmm. Without checking out what they are giving you up against the word of God Amen. is that you will end up leaving the right way Amen. and following the wrong way. Amen. When you look at the way, there's only one or two ways that a man can travel religiously. Right. It's either going to be a broad way Amen. or it's going to be the straight and the narrow way. Amen. In Matthew chapter 7 yes, and beginning at verse number 13, the Bible says, in the end, at the straight gate, oh, wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there'll be which go in there at. Are you noticing what Jesus said? Yeah. Jesus said that there is a way that men are going to travel, and it's called the broad way. Yeah. And it's this broad way that's going to lead to destruction. There's going to be a whole lot of people that are going to follow the broad way. Yeah. The broad way is going to be a popular way. The broad way is going to be a more accepted way. But the broad way is the wrong way. Yeah. And that's why Jesus says that it leads to destruction. Yeah. And don't be surprised when you see a whole lot of people that are going to follow the broad way. Because Jesus said, now straight is the gate yeah. and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And there's only going to be a few that's going to find it. When you look at the reality of what Jesus is saying, it ought to cause you to sit back and start evaluating yourself and start wondering, am I following the right way or am I following the wrong way? Am I following the wrong way or am I following the narrow way? When you look at answering the question, is your religion a fact? or a fable. That's exactly what we're referring to uh, is what you're following and practicing religiously according to the word of God 
Or is it something that has been traditionally accepted by your family that's really craftily and handcrafted, designed by some man that seeks to turn people his way rather than have them following God's way when you follow something that's not according to the straight way. It's nothing short of a cunningly devised fable. It's a well thought out lie with the intended purpose to deceive people yeah. into thinking that they're traveling God's way when they're actually traveling the wrong way. Yeah. That's why when you get the word, my friends, when they find out that what you need to do to be right with God, if you're looking for what God says yeah. as far as how to worship Him in spirit and in truth, if you're looking for the way that God says that you must be saved, if you're looking for the way that God says that you can have all of your sins forgiven and have them removed from your record. If you're looking for a way to be able to stand before God in the judgment and hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Then if you're looking for the right way, you've got to look in the word of God. You've got to get it from God rather than get it from some man. It was in Galatians chapter 1 and verse number 11 that the apostle Paul said that what he got as far as the gospel, he didn't get it from no man. Paul said, but I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. Paul said, I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. And the apostle Paul informs us in Ephesians chapter 3 and beginning at verse number 1 that everything that God revealed unto him he wrote it down so that we could read it for ourselves in Ephesians chapter 3 and beginning at verse number 1 Paul said for this cause I Paul the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you and how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. Paul says, as I wrote before in few words, whereby when ye read, he may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Paul said, what I got from God, I wrote it down for you. So that if you wanted to know what it is that God gave me, you can read it for yourself. You ain't got to depend on what pastor said. All you got to do is read it for yourself. You ain't got to depend on what bishop said. You can read it for yourself. You ain't got to go out there when the pole comes out there on the balcony and waves his hand over the crowd. You can get you a good old copy of the word of God and read it for yourself. Paul said when God gave to me, I wrote it down for you so that if you want to know how to be right with God, you can read the word for yourself. And then when you read it and you find it in the Bible, you will know for certain that it came from God. And if it came from God, it will be able to stand the test of time. See, all of these doctrines and these fables of men are going to fade with time. Those doctrines come and those doctrines go just like the seasons they change from one season to another but see the word of God stays constant the word of God stays consistent what it said when Paul wrote it down is the same thing it says right now today what it said when Peter penned what he penned is the same thing that's penned in the word of God that we have today generations can come and go but the word of God will still stand forever. Nations can rise and nations will fall, but the word of God won't change. Seasons will change and men will change, but the word of God will 
not changed. It might be scoffed at by scorners, but it's still not going to change. It might be exaggerated by fanatics, but it's still not going to change. It might be misconstructed, I misstated, but it's not going to change. You can rant about it, you can rave about it, but it still ain't going to change. You can curse it, and it still ain't going to change. You can throw it down, you can deny it, and you can reject it, but it still ain't going to change. The Word of God will still be the same. Heaven and earth shall pass away.